are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you need more funding and money for your deals, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the money regardless of your credit, regardless of your verification of income, regardless of your experience in real estate investing. Well, welcome to the show. This is Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, and I'm so excited to have as my guest today, John Merriweather, and I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. Before I do, uh, let me tell you what I'm talking about on getting you plugged into the money. The last live event for this year, the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference is just a few short weeks away. It's right around the corner. It's October 10th, 11th, and 12th here this fall in 2018. And here's why you want to come. First, I'm going to go ahead and give you the website so you can check it out. All right. So this is for new real estate investors, seasoned real estate investors who are looking for funding for their deals. I'm also going to be teaching real estate investing uh, from start to finish. So the website to go ahead and check out when you finish the show here is www.jayconner.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. That's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. It's a three day event, October 10, 11, and 12. The first day I'm going to dive deep in uh, private money and how you can find it very quickly and get it. Uh, we're not talking hard money or brokers. We're talking about doing uh, business with individuals. The afternoon of the first day, we go on my bus tour where we actually go to our houses that uh, are under renovation or they are finished or we haven't started yet. I'm going to pull the curtain back and I'm going to tell you exactly how we found the deals, how much we paid for them, how we controlled them, uh, what the renovation costs are. You'll learn about estimating repairs how much we're going to sell it for. So you'll see exactly what the profits are. You'll also meet on my bus tour. You will meet uh, some of my team. You will meet my contractors and how I do business with them. You'll also meet uh, our interior designer. Uh, you'll meet um, our realtor, et cetera. And so you'll be able to duplicate this business model. On the second day of the event, I'm going to teach you all four pillars of my business, how we find deals before other real estate investors even know they exist. Uh, secondly, how we're able to fund them using private money and other creative methods, and then how we're able to sell any house in 72 hours or less. On the third day, it's all about automation. Again, virtual assistance. How do you automate your business so you're not uh, you know, working in your business, but rather you're working on your business? I'm going to show you how I actually do this business uh, in five to 10 hours per week, making an average of 60, over $60,000 profit per deal. So again, uh, oh, by the way, on the end of the second day, I'm going to have my private lenders at the event for you to network with, and you'll be able to uh, you know, talk with the private lenders and et cetera. Again, get on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. With that, let me welcome my good friend and student, John Merriweather from the Creedmoor city in North Carolina. So John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jay. Glad to be here this afternoon. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you were able to, uh, to take a, a few minutes and, and share your story with, uh, with our viewers and listeners. Um, John is a um, very successful student of mine. John came into my world oh, just a little over a year ago. And uh, so, John, first, let me ask you, um, what was your career or is your career uh, before you got into real estate investing? OK, thanks, Jay. Uh, my career, I am a data center manager. Uh, so I manage about 10 data centers currently uh, throughout the United States. Right. So that's heavily on the IT side. Right. And how long have you been doing that? I've been doing that for, wow, 18 years. Gotcha. And you are, and you still have the day job, right? That's right. Okay. Well, um, before we finish the interview, I'm definitely going to want you to talk about uh, the challenges and, and how you uh, pushed through the challenges and became successful of managing and being a part of a full-time you know, day job and being a real estate investor as well. Well, why don't we just go ahead and talk about that, John? I mean, you know, how did you, um, you know, what challenge did you have with that? And then how did you, how did you push through that? 
Okay. Uh, the main challenge is the time. You have to have the time management to fit in the research that you need to do uh, to purchase properties. So my challenge was, okay, finding the leads. And then once I find the leads, how do I research the leads and things like that? So I needed a system that was going to be simple enough for me to follow and have success and give me uh, guaranteed uh, uh, results in finding properties. So that's when I entered your world and uh, followed your pre-foreclosure system. And from that point on, that's how I started finding my leads. And so I would just say it's the time management aspect of it. Yeah. So, you know, on, on you doing your deals, what would you say is a realistic amount of time that uh, you would invest per week, um, you know, doing the business outside of your day job? Uh, right now, Jay, I'm, I'm probably about at 15 hours a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we uh, grow and automate, that's going to shrink down, of course. Uh, so uh, it's all about uh, one thing I learned from you is learning how to delegate and automate. So right. as I learn pieces and see what pieces I can delegate out, then my time shrinks down. Excellent. So 15 hours a week. And of course, some weeks would be less than that. Right. But on average, 15 hours a week, that's really not that much extra time in order to you know, make the kind of profits that we do in, in real estate, right? Right. Excellent. In fact, in a, in a moment, I'm going to want you to tell a story about one of your deals and how you found it and the numbers behind it and et cetera. But before we get to that, um, what is it that initially drew you into real estate investing? And when was that? Well, what initially drew me was to, I wanted to build generational wealth. And even some people might even say transcendent wealth because it's beyond just growing it for me and my family, it's uh, growing it for a, a community, right? So I first delved into real estate in 2007. That's when I bought my first property. Uh, mm -hmm. And been continuing ever since. So it was always this, that desire after reading, of course, many people get inspired by the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And so after reading that, uh, that figure is like, okay, real estate is a great vehicle for uh, growing wealth. And that's what got, me, uh, got my interest into it. Excellent. So let's see here. Regarding the funding of your deals, I know you fund your deals in various ways. So of the deals that you've done, what are the different ways that uh, you're able to fund your deals? Well, number one, um, the way that you teach Jay is with the private money. So you can fund it uh, using that. Uh, most of my deals right now I'm doing subject to uh, where we take over the existing uh, loan and agree to make the payments and uh, just move forward that way. So uh, that's how I'm doing most of my deal deals. Right. So now subject two, just to make sure all of our listeners understand and viewers understand when you're taking over the debt, take just a second and describe what that means to buy subject two. OK, so a lot of confusion comes in because uh, some people think that you're assuming the loan. You're not assuming the loan. You're just uh taking over the responsibility or uh, of the debt. So what you do is the loan stays in the homeowner's name. You'll receive the title, but what you're doing is you're paying that uh, mortgage monthly uh, for that homeowner. So that's what we mean about uh, taking it subject to. Exactly. Um, so let's take a moment and talk about um, what would you say is one of or it is your biggest mistake that you've made in real estate investing and what lesson or lessons did you did you learn from that? OK, um, my biggest mistake was uh, with my first property. Uh, I'm living here in North Carolina and I purchased a property out of state uh, in Detroit, Michigan in 2007. And we know what was happening around then. That's uh uh, I actually purchased it right before the uh, mortgage real estate bubble um, burst. So a gentleman came in, told me about his program. Uh, I took it at face value. I did not do the proper research uh, to see what the industry trends were uh, in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I just took everything that he had at face value. Uh, he presented the numbers. We signed up, uh, signed the deal. And then about, I guess, two or three months later, uh, what was a uh, hundred thousand dollar house was now seventeen thousand dollars. Wow! 
<laughs> so, uh, and that's what really drove me to do more research and become more educated about uh, real estate investing because out of that first mistake, I wanted to find a way to do it better to protect myself so that if the market fluctuations occurred, that I wouldn't take that dramatic of a financial hit. Got it. The, the, the biggest lesson learned there is know how to really uh, prove the value of a mm -hmm. property. Uh, did uh, So that's one lesson, knowing how to get the value. Now, when you're investing around in your area, uh, in the Creedmoor area and surrounding areas um, there in North Carolina, how are you... Um, how are you making sure that you really know what the value of a property is or the after repair value is before you buy it? Okay. Uh, I do two levels of that, Jay. Uh, the first thing I do is um, use various websites. Um, you can go to uh, Trulia, uh, Zillow, or uh, I believe it's realestateabc.com. Uh, so that's what I do to get the initial one. Um, but also I've teamed up with uh, real estate agents that can pull the comps for me to show me officially what the after repair value would be. Excellent. And that's exactly what I still do. Um, in fact, uh, for everyone that's viewing and, um, and listening, uh, one of the very first things you'll want to do if you're new to real estate investing is establish a relationship with a local realtor that uh, can get you the comps and give you their opinion of the after repair value before you buy the house. And like you said, John, you know, these services such as ABC, real estate, et cetera, that's a good place to start to see if, you know, the deal might be in the ballpark of actually being profitable. But I highly recommend uh, to make sure you get a CMA or a comparable market analysis uh, here to everybody that's viewing and, and, um, and listening before you, before you purchase that property. Now, let me ask you another question about that deal up in Michigan. So you were really just, sort of taking someone's word, so to speak, as to what this property was worth up there, right? Right. Okay. So did anybody in your family or on your real estate investing team go look at the house before you bought it? No, they did not. So there's number two lesson. <laughs> so number two, out. number two lesson is like I was asked, um, I was asked by a student a few days ago. Uh, oh, it was on my free coaching Friday. Um, they asked me, they said, uh, do you ever buy a house that you have not seen? And the answer is yes. I, I, buy, I bought a lot of house. I, I, I just put a bid on a house today that I haven't seen. I haven't seen, but someone very important on my team has seen the house. Typically, if I'm not seeing it, it's definitely going to be uh, one of my contractors that will estimate the repairs going inside the house and also my realtor. All right. We'll go look as well to verify what they believe the comps or not the comps, but the after repair value to be. So that's number two lesson. Uh, we definitely do not want to invest in a property unless either yourself or someone on your team has, has seen the property. Excellent. Exactly right. Now let's turn the coin upside down, John. Now that was a, that was a deal that we learned lessons from, and I still learn lessons from, from, you know, the deals that I do, but um, let's share a story. Or if you would share a story of, um, of a deal you've done, a typical deal you've done, uh, how you found it, the numbers, how you funded it uh, and et cetera. So in any, you know, deal that comes to mind that uh, we can learn some good lessons from. Yes. Yes. Um, I picked up a property in Raleigh um, a few, few short months ago, uh, and I actually found it using your pre foreclosure system. Uh, so uh, did the research, sent a yellow letter. Uh, the gentleman called in, um, explained the situation to me. And this time I did go look at the property, Jay. I <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson learned. So uh, looked at the property. Uh, we sat down. We come to terms, and I uh, um, agreed to take it over subject to. Um, he had uh, purchased it for a hundred and eighty-one thousand uh, dollars, and actually sold that property for two hundred and thirty-one thousand um, dollars. The repairs that needed to be in there was very minimal. Is um, 
$8,000 worth of repairs. Uh, so it was a win-win for me and win-win for him because he was on the brink of losing his home uh, and uh, having that foreclosure on his record. So we were able to step in, serve, and help him and also um, fish the property up and be able to sell it and help ourselves, but also give a quality home in a great neighborhood uh, to, a, uh, to a young family. So it worked out for everyone. All right. So uh, let's go back and, and, and talk about a couple of things that you just shared. So you said you used my foreclosure system to find the property. So uh, tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about what it is that is my foreclosure system and how that works. OK, so what um, what I like about your foreclosure system is it tells you how to search public records and find individuals who are in the uh, pre foreclosure state. So they haven't gone to foreclosure um, um, uh, court yet, but they have been served a notice uh, that they're entering into that. And that gives us an advantage so that we can go in there and maybe step in sooner uh, rather than later. So we beat the competition, too. Uh, uh, to that uh, individual. Uh, yeah, one big one big piece of that, not to interrupt you, John, but um, one big piece of that is that we don't rely on online uh, services because the online services may only be, be um, brought current maybe every once a week or every two weeks. And we're getting the information before anybody else does. Therefore, it gives us an opportunity to serve and help uh, people that are in foreclosure, in distress, before other real estate investors are, you know, reaching out to them. Yes, yeah. yes. So that was the foreclosure system. And you said something uh, just a second ago, John, that um, the reason we resonated so well is that you used the word serve and yes. helping. And that's what this is all about. We're not out here to take advantage of people that are in distress. We're here to serve people that are in distress. And in many cases, there can be as, as many as four different people that win from our transactions. Mm -hmm. If we're buying a foreclosure, then that's a win for them. They don't have the foreclosure on the record. In some cases, we're actually able to help them move and get back on their feet. Um, you know, if we're funding it with private money, uh, there's a win for the private lender. Uh, the third one is if we sell it on our 72 hour system, those people couldn't get a mortgage. So they win, right? By, by buying the house from us on the rent to own program. And then of course we win by orchestrating it all together. So I'm, I'm really glad you said the word serving and helping because that's what this all is all about. So now back to your deal, you, you found it through the foreclosure system mm -hmm. and funded it by buying it subject to the existing. Correct. and and you bought it for what? Payoff or a little bit over payoff? A little bit over payoff. Uh, he needed a little money to get on his feet, so I helped him out with that. Okay, so you bought it for what? Around one hundred and eighty-five. Well, right, right, one hundred eighty-one because he owed a little bit less than that. So okay, so that was including the uh, the, the assistance that he needed. Right, and then you only needed like eight thousand dollars. You said in getting it ready to market. So you had a total of. Um, well, with closing costs, call it one hundred and ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you said you sold it for how much? Two thirty one. Two thirty one. Awesome. Well, that, those numbers work in my yes. world. <laughs> yes. 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 I'll take that all day. <laughs> <laughs> now, from the time you bought it, how long did it take to sell it? From the time I bought it, um, maybe about. Let's see. We closed in October. Uh, we had some delays because of the holidays in there. Uh, so about right at a month, month and a half it took. And uh, we had an open house on uh, on a Saturday and we had a committed deal on that Monday. Woo! Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what would you say, what, what comes to mind when I ask what is uh, the best advice that you could give to a new real estate investor like if you think if you think back to you doing that deal in michigan what what do you in hindsight wish that you had done you know as a new real estate investor uh, i'm going to say two things jay uh the number one is if you haven't done it before get a mentor to assist you so that you don't have to learn 
get a degree from the, um, the School of Hard Knocks. Right. Uh, uh, and you can miss some of the pitfalls there. But also be consistently committed to the process. Um, don't dabble. Don't do a little bit here, a little bit there. Be consistently committed to the process. Uh, and that way you'll see the results sooner rather than later. Awesome. So um, speaking of getting a mentor, so you have been to a number of my live events uh, that, that we conduct. So how about take just a, a moment and share with uh, our viewers and listeners, uh, what would you say is different about this real estate investing live event uh, that I present and why, you know, what was your takeaways from it? And why would you encourage viewers and listeners to get to this event? Okay. Uh, one thing that's different is that since it's in this area, Jay, uh, you know the area you're practicing what you're preaching. Uh, we see the results of it. We can actually go to the houses. You walk us through the numbers of your deal. So we know that you're actually in the business. You're not just somebody coming in and talking about what you heard. You're talking about what you know, and what you do. This is your livelihood. Um, also, the atmosphere comes more so, like you said, from an atmosphere of serving and helping, not just to make a quick buck. Uh, you teach us how to respect the individual, but also respect ourselves uh, and also respect uh, uh, the private lenders, which we connect with. Um, I like it because it's more so it's not just a conference. It's almost like a family reunion. Uh, there's a warmth. There's a. Um, personal touch to it. Uh, you're very approachable. <laughs> uh, you're relatable. So uh, and it creates an atmosphere where other fellow real estate investors are sharing uh, what's working for them, what they're seeing, and we're learning what's working for you. And you're always on the cutting edge. You're always adapting. You're always evolving so that you can stay in this business. Because if you don't evolve, you're, you can easily uh, coast your way out of this business. Uh, so uh, I just like that. It's always something new. It's always something fresh. It's a family feel. And we know that you're doing it because we see it uh, every day. Uh, and we can tell that in the presentation. Yeah. Thank you, John. And one thing you just said is so true. And that is the uh, marketing strategies and et cetera. It's like any other business. You know, what worked maybe two or three or four years ago may not be working today and new marketing strategies and new resources. You know, one of the uh, most important things we do in the real estate investing business is we need uh, consistent, motivated seller leads coming into our world consistently. And that's what you said a moment ago is being consistent with the business and the different ways of finding uh, motivated sellers, you know, that continues to change. So you're right, you know, at the live event, I continue to bring, you know, those new resources and et cetera. Um, but we're almost out of time on the show, John, but I got a couple more questions to ask you. You got another couple of minutes? Sure do. All right. So I want to talk about general success now, success in real estate investing, and then just generally being a successful entrepreneur. When I ask you, what is a personal habit or a personal ritual uh, habit, if you will, that you do on a consistent basis that you would say contributes to your overall success? Okay. Uh, a lot of success can be linked to your mindset. And uh, Jay, you helped me a lot with that. Uh, the affirmations, I say affirmations every morning to start my mindset to have, make sure I posture myself with the attitude of winning. I'm expecting to be successful each and every day uh, because you're going to have challenges. You're going to get knocked down. But if you're expecting that you're going to be successful, it makes it a lot easier for you to get up and continue trying. I love it, John. I love it because, you know, most of the time we get what we expect. Yes. <laughs> and, and if you're expecting the positive, you're expecting the uh, success, then that's much more likely going to come your way. Um, now, I know you're a Christian, John, like myself. So other than the Bible, all right. What would you say is a book that has had, if not the most, a lot of impact on your life and your outlook on life and your general success? OK, uh, one book that I just finished reading, Jay, and it's a very powerful book is The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. And I've heard of it. 
Yes. Yes. That is a very powerful book because what she tells you is uh, anytime you're going to take an action, don't sit there and think about it. Count down from five, four, three, two, one and launch yourself into the action. Uh, because the longer you think, you'll talk yourself out of uh, and come up with reasons why you shouldn't take the action that you're thinking about. Right. Uh, since you read that book, and and actually, um, I I listened. And what they do is every day you get a summary of a book, but you mm -hmm. can listen to the entire summary in like 10 to 12 minutes, right? right? Instead of having to read the whole book. And so I listened to the Blinkist summary of the five second rule. And uh, I started practicing that this year as well. Can you, can you think of the, can you think of an example recently since you read the book to where you counted that you thought of something that you needed or wanted to do and you counted down the five seconds and you went ahead and took the action. Have you put it into practice yet? Yes, I have put it into practice, uh, not just with real estate investing, but also with um, my health management. Uh, sometimes you don't want to wake up and uh, exercise, but the alarm clock goes off. It's like, OK, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a morning job to get it in, to maintain my self-care. Uh, even when real estate leads come in, I'm making sure that I don't let that lead get cold because the uh, older and colder, uh, the less chance that you're going to be able to turn it into a deal. So when the leads come in, I get the notification from Pat Live. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. So, <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's called taking action now. That's, that's right. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on to uh, the show here with me. Uh, any final parting comments or any final piece of advice to our viewers and listeners before we sign off? Uh, I just want to let them know that uh, if you have questions about getting into real estate investing, I want to let you know that uh, Jay's methodology works. You can do it. You have to make up your mind that you that you can do it, that it's possible for you. And if you need help, this gentleman right here will help you to the fullest of his ability and to uh, uh, and your willingness. So if you're willing and you're coachable, come see Jay. He'll help you out. He'll get you that um, first deal and ultimately change your life. That's awesome. Well, done. So one more time, everybody, get on over to the website and get registered. It's a $3,000 event. You get to come for free because you're listening or watching my show. Uh, the only thing there is is a $97 registration fee, and that's it. So get on over to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. John, thank you again so much for coming on with me. And to all our viewers and listeners, here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show and we'll see you at the upcoming live event. Bye for now.